Number 76 on our AFI 100 Years 100 Movies 10th Anniversary Edition list is 1994's Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, played expertly, amazingly, by the legendary Tom Hanks, is born in the 1940s. He's a simple man from Alabama whose life takes him on an incredible journey where he collides with massive moments in 20th century American history again and again. The movie is narrated by the titular character as he tells his life story to anyone who will listen at a bus stop in 1981. Without spending two hours recapping this rapid-fire uh, movie, Gump lives through President Kennedy, the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s, the Vietnam War, President Johnson. He meets Elvis, he meets John Lennon, he meets President Nixon. He's invited to stay at the Watergate Hotel and sees the break-in and calls the security desk. He plays ping-pong for the U.S. Olympic team against China, and he starts a successful business becoming a multi-millionaire. And that is just a small sampling of the massive events Gump bumps into and influences all while just trying to find his first childhood love, Jenny. I was so happy when this movie popped up on the list. I don't look beyond in the list, I don't go ahead to see what's coming, so it stays fresh for me. And I first saw this movie when I was nine years old. It completely captivated me. Having this likable, innocent, fictional character be a thread that wove so much of American history together was absolutely fascinating to me. This was actually how I was first introduced to many of these historical moments. I was nine. I didn't know what the Watergate scandal was. As I grew up and was drawn back to this movie again and again, I was also more and more educated by real history. Over and over, I was able to get real, deeper meaning out of this movie. Now, revisiting, yet again, sorry I'm getting repetitive in my speech here, uh, was a treat since I had time, it had been some time since I checked in on it, and history is something that I'm very interested in in my personal life. It's what I do to fill time. I wanted to start this video off by declaring my adoration for the movie because I feel this is one that in more recent years either doesn't get enough attention or is openly mocked for its sweetness or whatever other reasons. It seems inevitable whenever a movie is so hugely successful and made with such mass appeal that down the line, it becomes something that is cool to hate, at least in the toxic realm of the internet. Now, the pedigree of this movie is undeniable. Tom Hanks. He is one of the greatest actors of all time. He can really do it all. He's been making movies for what feels like forever in the best possible way. Then you have Sally Field, who plays Forrest's strong-willed mother, who will do anything for her child. Gary Sinise, Forrest's uh, commanding officer, who falls into a pit of despair and has his own journey back to finding himself. Robin Wright plays Jenny, Forrest's real life, or Forrest's lifelong love, um, who has a whole different American experience. And of course, Michaelty Williamson, not exactly a household name for a lot of us, who plays Forrest's best friend, Bubba. These are just a few of some of the biggest stars in the movie who jump out for me. There is a slew of supporting roles without a weakness in the bunch. There's even a constant stream of cameos from cast and crew, you know, they're put their family members in to fill in the gaps. And then you add in the very well done, especially given that this movie was from 1994, recreations of archival footage that inserts Forrest into real world events, making impossible celebrity and historical cameos just part of the narrative. If you're a fan of movies enough to watch me run down what AFI considers to be the 100 best movies in history, you must have seen this movie. Because of that, I don't want to spend the rest of this video rehashing things we all know. I wanted to dive a little deeper in this movie, and as I did, I found a, a bunch of amazing tidbits that filled in knowledge gaps for a movie, and a lot of these knowledge gaps were gaps that I didn't even know I had for decades. Forrest Gump was based on a novel by the same name. That novel was written by Winston Groom. Even more interesting, there was a sequel novel in 1995 called Gump and Co., you know, Gump and Company. In that sequel novel, it's revealed that Jenny Curran died of hepatitis C. Now, Jenny's last name is never actually said during Forrest Gump, but it appears on the return to sender letters that Forrest gets back. That's a bit of trivia that cost me the kingly sum of $10 in 1994. It never occurred to me exactly what she died from. It's clear she wasn't well, and it's clear that she had a very difficult life that was hard lived through drugs and anonymous sex and that whole era of the 60s and 70s that she fell into to cope. I don't mean to be insensitive with this next part, so I apologize if any of this is taken the wrong way. Growing up, 
I always had it in my head that Forrest Grump had Down syndrome. He was clearly very high functioning, but I thought that was part of his character. More recently, people have speculated that Gump was on the autistic spectrum. Groom, the author of the novel, says he never intentionally or outright wrote Gump to be autistic per se. Autism has also classically been misdiagnosed as mental retardation in some cases. There's actually no definitive answer on this, but it was kind of eye-opening to me that there was no answer on it, because it was so concrete in my head until, you know, recently. I've already gushed about Tom Hanks earlier in this video. When, when doing the research to make this, I found even more about the man to love. For one thing, to help get the movie made, Hanks accepted no salary. He agreed to a percentage of profits. In hindsight, this turned out to be the right move, since he made an estimated $40 million. Hanks also agreed to the movie without even finishing the script. He had the script for something like 90 minutes before he called him Zemeckis and said, yeah. His one condition was that the historical aspects of the movie be as accurate as possible. There was also the accent. Hanks wanted to dial it back a little bit, but he ended up modeling it after Michael Connor Humphreys, who plays the young Forrest Gump, and that is his real accent. The very famous line, my name is Forrest Gump, people call me Forrest Gump, was ad-libbed by Hanks on set. The legendary director Robert Zemeckis loved it so much it stayed, and that's really a cultural milestone, or a cultural plant, I don't know. I'm embarrassed I made it this far in the video without focusing on Zemeckis more. He created this, and he's such an engineer of, you know, my childhood, I'm sure a lot of yours also, and this movie, and a lot of, like, like a lot of Zemeckis' work has grown with me. So since we're already running a little long, I do want to mention a quote of Zemeckis' that sums up his and screenplay writer Eric Ross' involvement in making this such a timeless classic. Quote, The writer, Eric Roth, departed substantially from the book. We flipped the two elements of the book, making the love story the primary and the fantastic adventures the secondary. Also, the book was cynical and colder than the movie. In the movie, Gump is a completely decent character, always true to his word. He has no agenda and no opinion about anything except Jenny, his mother, and God. That is so aptly put by Zemeckis, I couldn't sum it up better myself. Forrest Gump had a budget of $55 million. It opened to only $24 million. But audiences clearly saw something special in this movie because it would go on to gross $678.2 million. Forrest Gump would receive 13 Oscar nominations. It would walk away with having won six of those. It won for Best Picture, Best Lead Actor, Best Director, Best Writing Based on Previous Material, Best Film Editing, and Best Effects. I really think Gary Sinise should have won for Best Supporting. Well, that's going to do it for 1994's Forrest Gump. Next up on our list is 1967's In the Heat of the Night. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscriptions really help us grow our audience. These AFI countdown videos hit a week early for our patrons on Patreon. Tiers start at only $1 a month, and you get multiple monthly bonus shows. Be sure to listen to So Wizard Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. SoWizardPodcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, videos, merchandise, and more. We love hearing feedback, so drop us a note in the comments or leave us something on social media. All of our kids can be found after the show and in the show notes. Thanks.